Hello everyone. Today in this video, we are going to learn about two port networks. Generally, any network may be represented schematically by a rectangular box like this. Okay. This will be considered as a network. And we already know network is a combination of different circuital elements right now we talk about port what do you mean by port port is a pair of terminals at which a signal may enter or leave a network that is called port let us have a pair of terminals here okay at which current is entering and leaving okay right so this is called a port and we can even have the voltage across this particular uh, terminals as V. Okay, so how many terminals are there? Pair, pairs of terminals? One pair. So that's why this is called one port network. Similarly, if we have one more pair of terminals at which current is entering and leaving. So this is one more port. Now this network is called two port network. And we can have uh, even have the voltage okay like that you can have the three port networks you can have four port network you can have n number of port networks okay so we are now interested in two port networks okay right in order to have the discrimination between the first port and second port we are separating them with the numbers suffix one stands for the first port two stands for the second port okay so before getting into the uh, concept of two port networks we need to remember some of the important assumptions there in this particular concept the first one is that the voltages and currents inside this rectangular box are not available for you okay so that is the first assumption the voltages and currents which are there inside this rectangular box are not available for you okay and the second assumption is that this network will consist of only only okay only linear elements or linear elements along with dependent sources okay strictly there should not be any independent sources okay so this is the second assumption and the third assumption is that we'll be having inductor and capacitors also okay if we have inductor and capacitors we have to assume that the initial conditions are zero okay initial conditions will be considered as zero Okay, so these are the basic assumptions that we need to remember throughout this two port networks concept. Okay, now one more uh, important point is there. Uh, we have I1, I2 there, right? I1, I2. Okay, so the directions of both the currents I1, I2 are assumed to be flowing into the network. Okay, flowing into the network. It is very simple there is no need to remember anything because uh, here um, we can consider plus minus voltage uh, polarities obviously the current always uh, leaves from positive terminal so there is a concept so if we have a uh, minus plus then obviously you have to take the current direction at a port like this okay so simple but usually we'll prefer plus to minus so that's why for a two port network so current like this the direction will be considered okay right so uh, apart from this point uh, you have to remember the first three assumptions which are mentioned here okay now now coming to the types of networks before coming to the types of networks let me tell you there are four variables there here as we, as we can see v1 i1 v2 I2. So these are the four variables, very important variables. So out of these four, okay, so two variables will be considered as dependent variables and two variables will be considered as independent variables. 
okay so in two port networks concepts dependent variables will be expressed in terms of independent variables okay so based on this concept we can have different probabilities okay like v1 v2 can be dependent i1 i2 can be independent like that we can have different probabilities so based on different probabilities we can have uh, types of two port networks okay so the types may be considered as uh, in terms of uh, you know um, parameters okay so based on these combinations we can have different uh, um, two port network parameters and are basically first one first one is a z parameters so let me tell you dependent and independent variables so in z parameters v1 and v2 will be considered as dependent variables i1 and i2 as independent variables okay now next one is y parameters it's a simple opposite case so i1 and i2 will be considered as dependent variables v1 and v2 will be considered as independent variables and third one is a b c d parameters or transmission parameters also we can call okay so in this a b c d parameters v1 and i1 will be considered as dependent and v2 i2 will be considered as independent variables and we can even have uh, inverse transmission parameters but i am not specifying here okay we'll go with the other type the fourth one is a uh, h parameters also called as hybrid parameters here in this case v1 and i2 will be considered as dependent variables and i1 v2 will be considered as independent variables and here also we can observe inverse hybrid parameters or g parameters i'm not talking about those uh, two types inverse uh, a b c d and inverse hybrid okay so just uh, just you can uh, switch over the dependent and independent variables there you can find the uh, inverse transmission and inverse hybrid parameters right so these are the types of um, two port network parameters okay so let us start with uh, z parameters now let us talk about z parameters okay the first one z parameters these are also called open circuit parameters why they were calling as uh, open circuit parameters let us say let us see okay so let us consider now um, a two port network like this so this is a two port network so we will be definitely have two pairs of terminals so here i1 and here v1 similarly we can have one more port here v2 i2 so let me tell you v1 i1 are the port 1 variables v2 i2 are the port 2 variables now Uh, and uh, we already discussed there are uh, two sets are there dependent and independent variables so in z parameters v1 and v2 are dependent variables i1 and i2 are independent variables now we are going to express dependent variables in terms of independent variables that means v1 v2 these are the dependent variables so before getting into the equation we have to remember that v1 v2 are the voltages so voltage means according to ohm's law v equal to iz is the formula okay so now it can be treated as z11 i1 plus z12 i2 clear this is first equation so z11 is a first port impedance okay so z12 is a transformed impedance between 1 and 2 okay so similarly we can have the other combination z21 i1 we are writing in a systematic way so z22 i2 okay so 1 and 2 now these equations 
can be expressed in terms of matrix also okay so uh, like you know so v1 v2 as a matrix form like this and similarly <clears throat> z11 z12 z21 z22 okay next i1 i2 so this vector is called v so this is called z matrix this is called vector i or i matrix okay so like this also we can represent okay so here v is called what column vector or column matrix and also current is a column right so is also considered as a column vector and uh, this uh, z11 z12 to this matrix is there no so this is called square matrix or impedance matrix now our aim is to find these parameters so what is the impedance and all we need to calculate so how we can calculate okay let us consider the case when i2 equal to 0 as we already know current 0 means it will be open circuited okay so from first equation v1 equal to what z11 i1 that's it because i2 got 0 so that's why from this equation we may able to calculate z11 as v1 by i1 so this impedance is called um, input impedance so here one port one is called input port and port two is called the output port or if you don't like input output then you can call it as port one port two, no problem okay now go with the second equation so from second equation v2 is z21 i1 that's it so here we can find z21 as v2 by i1 okay so and we already know that v equal to what i z in the case of ac now what is z v by i so if you have z11 keep 11 if you have z12 keep 12 if you have 21 keep 21 so like that you can have the ratio okay right so here the same thing can be observed z11 so it will be v1 by i1 similarly z21 v2 by I1. okay so this is the first condition now go with the second condition when i10 what happens again it's a current it will be open circuited then from the first equation what you can get v1 equal to what z12 into i2 so what is z12 this is v1 by i2 got it now the second equation from second equation v2 equal to z22 into i2 so z22 equal to v2 by i2 that's it so we have two different conditions okay so when i20 what parameters you are getting z11 and z21 when sorry here uh, right so when i1 equal to 0 what happened what what parameter that uh, what parameters that you can get z12 and z okay so in this way we have to calculate the network and in the uh, the same equations can be represented uh, in equivalent circuit form also okay so let me tell you that also so now let us solve the problem based on okay so here i'll control a very simple network okay so let us consider it this is 1, 1, 2, 1, 3. Okay. So, this is the input port. V1. I1 is the input port. V1 is the input And here, I2 is the output port voltage. Now, what we have to do is calculate the Z parameters. Okay. So, how we can find the Z parameters in the network. Okay. So, let us see what we what we need to do we have to write the z parameter equations we already discussed v1 equal to z11 i1 okay so let us write the z parameter equations we already discussed v1 equal to z11 i1 okay z11 i1 plus z12 i2 so this is our first equation now v2 is z21 i1 plus z22 i2 okay so this is the second equation
now we apply the conditions now first what we apply when i2 equal to 0 what happens open circuit will be happening under this condition from equation 1 what parameter that you can get z11 that is v1 by i1 similarly from second equation we can get z21 as v2 by i1 okay so now let us draw uh, uh, the uh, the network uh, under this condition okay now without anything first write the skeleton okay right so this is 1 ohm 2 ohm 3 ohm now what is the condition i to 0 so that means the second port got the open circuit now that's why this first port will be considered as supply voltage this current has supply current so i to 0 means it does not mean uh, like v2 is 0 okay so v2 will be there it will be considered as measured voltage so v1 is supply since so there is no need to do any kind of calculations you need to calculate i1 and v2 that's it okay now as you can see the current i1 circulates here like this so shall we find uh, i1 now so i1 equal to v1 by what resistance 1 plus 3 so this is v1 by 4 this is the first equation now we need to calculate what v2 so let us have the polarities plus minus here so here also plus minus now concentrate on v2 side so from plus to minus in order to reach plus to minus which is the simplest path 2 and 3 so that's why voltage across 2 ohm resistor plus voltage across 3 ohm resistor you need to consider now since the current i1 is flowing like this so here is plus here is minus okay now is there any current flow in uh, 2 ohm resistor no so that's why voltage drop is zero so now current flowing through 3 ohm is i1 so 3 i1 is the voltage drop across 3 ohm resistor done so v2 will be 3 i1 so this is our second equation now start solving the parameters z11 equal to what v1 don't write anything for v1 because it is a supply voltage so v1 by i1 so what is i1 v1 by 4 obviously you'll be getting 4 ohms now go for the other one this is z21 this is v2 by i2 so v2 what is v2 what is v2 v2 is from equation 2 we can say that is 3 i1 by don't write any substitute for i1 because it is straight away cancelling okay it will be 3 ohms that's it so first case is over now go for the second case the second case is when i1 equal to 0 again what condition can be observed open circuit so from first equation what parameter can be obtained z12 z12 equal to v1 by i2 okay now from second equation what parameter can be observed z2 that is v2 by i2 let us redraw the network without any uh, late so this is a skeleton this is 1 ohm 2 ohm 3 ohm now i10 that means first port got the open circuit so now the second port will be considered as supply voltage and here is a supply current and here v1 will be considered as a measured voltage okay so let me erase it and really i'll write okay so this is measured voltage v1 okay now this i2 is circulating like this so this is plus this is minus now what is i2 i2 is what v2 by resistance 2 plus 3 so this is v2 by 5 okay call it as equation 3 now it is the time to calculate v1 so why we are calculating i2 and v1 because with those parameters with those values only we can find the parameters and why we are not calculating v2 so here v2 will be considered as our supply voltage so that's why no need to do any kind of calculation to find v2 okay so now v1 so uh, let me write the polarities plus minus okay so how can uh, how can you reach v1 plus to minus simplest path voltage across 1 ohm plus voltage across 3 ohm that's it 
no current flow through one wall so voltage drop is zero so voltage across three that is three i2 okay so now what we can write v1 equal to 3i2 that's it you got the sorry fourth equation now go for the parameters start uh, this one okay what we can find z12 equal to what v1 by i2 so v1 is what 3i2 by i2 so i2 gets cancelled you'll be getting 3 ohms now go for the second parameter under this condition that is z22 so z22 equal to what v2 by i2 right so what is v2 it's a supply no need to write anything now what is i2 from equation 3 what we can write v2 by 5 so this is 5 ohms so did you find any pattern in these parameters yes so you can observe this z21 equal to z12 which is of same value you can observe whenever you observe the uh, condition like this the network will be considered as a reciprocal network okay so let me tell you the uh, the inferences uh, what we call those inferences as what is z11 and all so here z11 is called as driving point inference okay driving point inference z22 will be called as output driving point uh, inference okay so whereas z11 you may also call as input okay input driving point inference okay now z12 is called 1 2 it's a forward okay so that's why it is called forward transfer inference z21 so uh, output to input so that's why it is called reverse transfer so this is about z parameters in coming videos we'll be discussing y parameters and rest of the parameters their interrelations okay so every topic will be covered okay so i hope this video will help you in uh, doing a calculation uh, like z parameters okay so thank you so much for watching this video see you in the next video thank you